Hello, and welcome to the screencast on launching Docker batch jobs on Mesos with Kronos. In this short presentation, we'll demonstrate how to launch Docker batch jobs in on the Mesos cluster with Kronos. We'll start by talking about Mesos itself and how it supports Docker, talk about Kronos and what value it brings to the Mesos cluster, and then the majority of the time will be spent on some demonstrations. Let's start by understanding Apache Mesos for those who may be new to it. Apache Mesos is a data center two-level scheduler and a cluster manager. It allows you to see all of the nodes of your cluster as if they're one machine. It aggregates all the resources of the data center. A topology diagram may help with understanding how Mesos fits in the data center. Mesos has two components to it, the Mesos master and the Mesos slaves. The Mesos slaves are installed on all of the nodes that will provide resources within the cluster. The Mesos master provides the aggregated view of the resources that are available on all the slaves. In order to make this work, there is a need for a data center application to schedule and then launch applications within the data center. The data center application may consist of a scheduler and an executor. The scheduler is the thing that has the intelligence to understand what to schedule and what to do when a failure occurs. The executor is the component that launches the task and provides isolation on a slave. Apache Mesos, as of version 0.20, has added Docker support as one of its containerizers, giving us the ability to launch Docker instances inside of a Mesos cluster. Kronos is one of those data center applications we spoke of, which has a scheduler in it used for launching batch processes. As of the latest version, 2.3, it has also added Docker support, giving us the ability to launch Docker instances for batch processing. Kronos is a data center application which manages the scheduling of short or batch style jobs within a Mesos cluster. It does this based on one of two criteria. The first is time, similar to a cron tab. The second is based on a dependency, the fact that one job was dependent on a second job, and that second job finished, so the first job then should, should start. So you may be asking why Kronos? Well, first of all, the most common way of managing batched style jobs in a data center is through a cron tab, and the challenge with that is that cron is a single point of failure. The second is that cron doesn't really manage things within a cluster style. Uh, there's a lot of work involved with managing that. Kronos takes advantage of the fact that Mesos manages the cluster for it, and it just launches jobs, and those jobs are allocated across the cluster in a way that fits the criteria described within that job. In this way, we can handle batch-style jobs in a clustering environment that also has dependency management. So why Docker? Well, Docker adds an extra added value within this ecosystem. First of all, Docker has become relatively popular. And it provides a level of environmental isolation that has some repeatability that's built into an image and has the ability to easily roll back. So when you launch a job with a Docker image, the image itself can contain the information or the libraries necessary for that cron process to work. It can be tested in isolation. It can be then deployed within a Docker repository and then pulled down and leveraged within, this, within a Mesosphere cluster. This diagram of leveraging Kronos off of Airbnb site uh, gives a nice topology of how Kronos may be used within a batch process cluster. Here you can see Kronos launching jobs within a Mesosphere cluster, leveraging databases 1, 2, and 3, leveraging S3, and launching off MapReduce type jobs. This is a pretty common scenario that you might find, and Kronos provides an excellent way of managing those batch processes. For the rest of this screencast, we're going to be looking at a demonstration. That demonstration will be looking at files which are on my local machine, and they'll be launched up against Kronos in a cluster environment on Google Cloud Platform. If you wanted to create your own cluster on Google Cloud Platform, uh, we provide a free service at google.mesosphere.com. Let's get started. By going to google.mesosphere.com, you'll be able to provision a Mesosphere cluster for your Google Cloud Platform. For this demonstration, I've already done that. 
You can see here on the Mesosphere launch pad that I have a cluster, a development cluster, 2427. I've already established a VPN connection to this cluster. We have a demo as well as tutorial on how to establish this on your own. Running within the cluster is a Marathon data center application, which for lo running a long-running process like we discussed, and Kronos, and then of course Mesos. Diving into the Mesosphere UI, you can see some previous demonstrations I was running. Going to the frameworks, we can see that uh, the Marathon framework is working, and the Kronos framework is working, um, otherwise known as a data center application. Let's dive into Kronos. By opening up Kronos, we can see that we don't have any applications running. Generally speaking, this would be a list of uh, named processes that are uh, staged to be run, uh, a graph to display how they are related to each other, and a way of creating a new job. Let's try to create a new job now. To start a job, it's useful to give it a descriptive name. In this case, we're just going to create a sleep command just to, for demonstration purposes, but you can imagine this being uh, for a batch job for downloading a file um, that a second job after this job is finished would kick off to do some analytics on. So for this example, let's just call it for sleep and with a command to loop through one through ten, uh, echoing out sleep, sleeping for ten or I'm sorry for two seconds uh, for each iteration. Uh, we have no parents and we want that job to start today. And we want that to start at, at this time, 6 in the morning. Uh, and we want it to repeat every 24 hours. Let's go ahead and create it. You'll see that this newly created job is reporting back as fresh, as this job has not been run yet. Switching over to Mesos, you can see that Mesos just now reported that the for sleep uh, task is active and running. Uh, it'll take about 20 seconds for that to complete. We can actually look into the sandbox, standard out, where we should see the report coming out. And uh, it, we have gone through all 10 iterations 20 seconds later. So this should be going to the completed status. And sure enough, we can see that it has. Switching back to Kronos. We can see that the for sleep job has completed successfully. So what we've looked at here is just running a batch job. Uh, we can imagine again a, a download of something, taking a period of time. Uh, in this particular case, we've launched it from the UI, Kronos UI, and there is no Docker involved. Currently, from the Kronos UI, it's not possible to launch Docker. Um, the important thing here is we can see that the, this is the this is the IP address for Kronos uh, at port 4400. Um, we need to now look at the RESTful API that's available for Kronos. What we have here is a launch script for launching into Kronos' API. You can see that it's a simple curl command that does a post to the IP address which we were just looking at at the same port. There are two basic RESTful APIs into Kronos, um, into the scheduler. One is the ISO 8601, which is the internationally recognized standard for date and time format. If we switch to the launch Kronos for dependencies, which we'll look at in a few minutes, um, the other URL is for scheduler dependency. Let's switch back to the launch Kronos based on time. Let's take a look at the same job, the for loop within Kronos, just in a JSON format. You can see this right here, this script actually takes a JSON format or a JSON file as an input into the post that will go to the ISO 8601. So let's look at the for loop. So we can see this basic same job. Um, we've given it the name of for loop instead of for sleep. Um, in this particular case, uh, one of the other differences we might note is the R is not a forever R, but an R5, which means it will repeat five times. Uh, we've given it some constraints as far as CPU and memory uh, constraints are concerned. That's about it. Let's launch this now using the launch script of launch Kronos uh, and the JSON file. 
So we've just looked at the launch script. That would be launch chronos.sh, not the dependency, but the one that goes to the uh, time post. And then we actually want the for loop of chronos.json file. And that is it. If we switch now over to the Kronos application, we should see that running. Before looking at Kronos, why don't we take a look at the JSON that would be used to launch Docker using basically the same command. This is the JSON file we just launched into Kronos, which configured this job, which, which is named for loop. Uh, let's take a look at what this might look like if we used a Docker instead of the default Mesos container. Of course, this JSON looks relatively the same, the difference being that it contains a container element, that container element being of type Docker with the Docker image. So this instructs Mesos, before launching the command, to do a pull of the image for that Docker. After that pull and that run, it will then execute that command. This gives us the opportunity to pull a Docker that has libraries or resources that must be necessary for the command to even execute. Before we launch this job into Kronos, let's take a look at uh, one more example that includes a dependency. It should be a dependency on this, on this script. This script is called the Hello Kronos, and in this particular case there is no time associated with it. It has a parent, which is the for loop docker, which was just the, the, the last job that we just looked at. Um, the only thing that this does is does an echo of hello, um, and, and that's it. I show you this because we're going to add this into our demo as well. Let's take a look at launching these jobs into Kronos. First, let's launch the job that includes Docker. And now that's launched. And let's launch the dependency job. In this particular case, we need the uh, different script launch uh, to a different endpoint. And now that's launched. Let's take a look at Kronos and see where we're at. Here we are looking at the Kronos screen again. You can see that we have the for loop for Docker, which is fresh. It's never been launched. Um, within Kronos, it's possible to um, force launch a particular script or job. You can go over here and see that there is a force run. Let's go ahead and do that. And let's force it. If forcing it, we'll know that uh, we are actually launching it inside the Mesosphere cluster. And in order to do this, the full image of Docker would need to be pulled down to whatever slave that's going to be launched on. The other thing that we know is that the hello task should also fire. If we switch over to Mesos real quick, we'll see that the for loop Docker is currently active. We'll see that the for loop completed and immediately an active task jumped to hello. That is Kronos launching off the hello task that followed the Docker uh, for loop. Switching back to Kronos, we'll see that uh, both those jobs succeeded. Pretty much anything that you're able to do with batch processing that is possible within Kronos is possible with a Docker as a container for it. Uh, it does provide a level of isolation that is uh, that can be valuable. Let's summarize what we've, what we've looked at for this screencast. The first thing to mention as we summarize is that if you'd like to try these scripts on your own, um, these, all the scripts and the job descriptions in JSON format are available on GitHub at this location. We can summarize by saying that if you're looking to run Docker in production at scale, Apache Mesos with Marathon has provided an answer. But now we can say that if you're looking to do that for batch, Kronos also now provides that answer on top of the Mesos cluster. We appreciate you watching and hope this added value. We would love your feedback.